Hello and welcome. We are going to look at the digestive system today and the first slide here is just a simple case of uh, knowing the different parts and being able to label them. So the parts are as follows. We have salivary glands, stomach, pancreas, small intestine, rectum, large intestine and the esophagus. So in order to see where these parts are, the salivary glands are here. I haven't drawn the mouth in um, all around the edge here, but the salivary glands are found just under the tongue. Uh, two positions, there's one actually above the um, the sort of food pipe here as well. But we've got the salivary glands, the stomach is here, the pancreas, now this is not actually specifically labelled on the spec for you to uh, label, but I think you should be aware of it because we do talk about it in other parts of uh, the topic of digestion. We've got the small intestine, um, that then leads to the large intestine, which then finally leads to the rectum, um, which then allows undigested food to pass out of the body. The esophagus here is the uh, food pipe or the pipe that connects the mouth to the stomach. So this is just really a question of knowing the different parts, nothing difficult here, just uh, spend a few minutes making sure you know those and you don't forget them. Um, the second part that I want to look at actually focuses more on these uh, food substances called carbohydrates and you need to know uh, different classes of carbohydrates and how they break down and what they break down into. So at the very top end we've got our um, polysaccharides and word poly when used in terms of describing molecules means many. Saccharides here links to the word sugar so we're basically saying many sugar units joined together and this is usually in the form of branched chains or sometimes spiral shaped molecules but these are basically polysaccharides these are the longer chains that you might see when we're talking about carbohydrates we can break it down then into something else that we call disaccharides and the prefix here the di means two so it's double units so you can imagine that um, these would be double units of uh, sugar or double sugar units that are joined together and the last one then is what we call the monosaccharides and mono here means single so we're talking about single units and these would then be just separate individual units that the sugars are broken down into for each of these it's good to be aware in fact you do need to be aware of examples so for polysaccharides the two common ones we have are starch and glycogen there are more for example cellulose is another one but the key ones I want you to remember for the purpose of this video is starch and glycogen starch found in plants now disaccharides the ones we need to remember are sucrose lactose and maltose and these are double unit uh, carbohydrates and for monosaccharides the most common one is glucose in actual fact the one we need to remember is called alpha glucose we also have fructose and we have galactose now there's quite a lot of words here if you haven't come across these before for you to learn but unfortunately you do have to know and learn them so it might be worth spending um, a minute or two uh, just making sure you get these understood and remembered okay so we've got polysaccharides disaccharides and monosaccharides and examples of each of those now an overview of digestion then is the next thing we're going to look at so here i've got what's supposed to be a jacket potato and that's a good source of starch and when we have a jacket potato and it's digested in our body it's actually broken down into much simpler substances than are initially found in here so that it can all be um, digested it can all be absorbed into the body now when we look at the kinds of molecules that are in here these are two forms of uh, starch that you might find in the potato and one is a branched kind of chain and one is a kind of spirally chain but these are uh, at the molecular level so these are actually molecules they're very very tiny and these are part of the starch that is found inside the jagged potato now if we were to have a closer look this is part of a branch chain of our starch and that during digestion is broken down further into these double units and further into these single units. Okay, so this is the this is the process of digestion of starch. We're going to look at it in a little bit, little bit more detail in a minute, but basically an overview of digestion is when we have large insoluble molecules and these are broken down by a process called hydrolysis. So they are hydrolyzed and this is an important keyword, you must know this word. So large insoluble molecules, it can also be not just starch and carbohydrates as described there but it can also be uh, proteins proteins are long chain molecules as well but they are hydrolyzed 
which means broken down into small soluble molecules so the molecules are much smaller when they've been broken down and these can then be absorbed into the body and assimilated by the body now these are two again important keywords you must know the difference absorption is actually just taking it into the body whereas assimilated means actually building it into the body so building say new tissue which then actually becomes part of the body okay so this is quite important again uh, the overall process of digestion is to convert large insoluble molecules by hydrolysis into small soluble molecules which can be absorbed and assimilated and you can see here that that's what's happened with our starch in our potato now let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail um, you have to know the steps in the digestion of starch and we can start off by looking at the salivary glands now the salivary glands as you know we said were here and they produce a special substance called salivary sali let's start that again salivary amylase now, amylase is an enzyme which starts to break down the starch and that will be found in the salivary glands we also have another type of amylase and that's found in the pancreas and we said the pancreas was here but that would produce what we call oops pan creatic amylase so these both have the job of uh, starting to break down the starch which is a long chain into our uh, shorter chain in fact double units uh, or the disaccharides that we've been talking about in the stomach incidentally nothing happens to starch or carbohydrates they're not digested the stomach is mainly for digesting protein but if we were to have a look at a diagram then we've got our long starch molecule here and pancreatic amylase and salivary amylase will actually start to break that down into our double units now these double units are called maltose a type of sugar called maltose and if you look and remember we talked about maltose being an example of a disaccharide so here we are the salivary amylase and the pancreatic amylase will break the starch the long chains of starch molecules into maltose which are our disaccharides and when we go further down into the small intestine we have enzymes that are produced that's not what I wanted that's what I wanted we have enzymes that are produced on the inside lining we call this the epith uh, epithelium of the small intestine so if this was a part of the small intestine that I've just cut out right here on the inside membrane there we call that the epithelium that actually produces uh, an enzyme called maltase and maltase has the job of breaking down maltose the sugar maltose into separate individual units so the maltase will break these disaccharide units these maltose sugars into what we call monosaccharides which we've mentioned previously the actual monosaccharide that is produced is glucose in actual fact is something called alpha glucose which we'll look at in more detail uh, in another video but these are actually uh, alpha glucose molecules and these are the ones that can actually be then digested into the bloodstream and then taken away and built into new molecules or used for respiration so quite a lot of information there you do need to make sure you know and remember it now uh, starch isn't the only carbohydrate that we take in in our food and that's digested we do have a couple of other types so we've also we've already dealt with um, more toes being broken down into alpha glucose by maltase we've got another type of uh, carbohydrate another type of sugar in fact uh, called sucrose and this is broken down by an enzyme called sucrase and again these are found in the internal lining the epithelium of the small intestine but this is broken down sucrose is broken down by sucrase into glucose and fructose sucrose is actually a uh, sugar found in fruits and often that's the in actual fact that's the sugar that you put into your tea and coffee um, we also have another type of sugar called lactose this is found in milk and that's broken down by an enzyme you might have guessed it already called lactase 
again found in the small intestine and that breaks down lactose into glucose and uh, galactose. Now these are monosaccharides, single units, sometimes referred to as uh, monomers. So these are the monomers, the monosaccharides that build up sucrose and they can be broken down by sucrase for sucrose and lactase for lactose. Now one more thing that you need to be aware of is this idea of lactose intolerance. Now lactose intolerance happens with people who are unable to produce this enzyme lactase in the small intestine. Uh, sometimes when babies uh, start to grow and develop they reduce the amount of lactase that's produced. They do need lactase when they're digesting their milk but they reduce the amount of lactose lactase produced as they grow up and sometimes this can go to such a low level that we develop this thing called lactose intolerance and that means the inability to digest and break down this sugar found in milk called lactose and it ends up as um, a buildup of gas we get a buildup of gas in the small intestine and that can lead to cramps nausea and in fact also uh, diarrhea as well um, always forget how to spell that I think it's D-I-A-R-R -R, something like that I think that's right diarrhea but this is these are the symptoms of um, having lactose intolerance this gas actually comes from bacteria which ferment the uh, lactose that's taken in because it can't be digested by the body these bacteria then break it down and the product um, is, uh, is gas and that is the cause of the cramps and nausea and diarrhea. There is one way of getting around this, one well two couple of ways of getting around this. If someone has lactose intolerance, uh, the first way is to avoid milk and this can be done reasonably well but you have to make sure that calcium and other nutrients are taken in in alternative forms in the diet. Uh, but the other thing is you can actually add lactase, this enzyme here, to milk before the person has it and then therefore there will be no lactose in the milk for them. Okay so this is an overview of digestion, digestion of starch and um, the different names of the different uh, polysaccharides, monosaccharides and disaccharides that you need to know about. So that's me done for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.